Thank you. Let me just check. Okay. Uh, thanks, everyone, and thanks for coming. My name is Ivo, as already heard, and I'll talk, be talking today about using reflexive eye movements for fast challenge response authentication. This is a shared work with, together with Mark Hirschlin, Kasper Bonner Rasmussen, and Ivan Martinovich from the University of Oxford. Despite the fact that eye tracking devices in the 60s look like torture devices, we believe that this is technology that is pervasive in our everyday lives and will become even more so in the future. And as such, we believe it to be very important to allow user authentication on any system that could support it. Why do we believe so? In the last 100 years, eye tracking has been used for research of visual perception, cognition, language comprehension, to medical domain where it can be very useful for early detecting of autism in children, to detecting concussions, detecting depression, to as an interface, for example, for disabled who are not able to use their hands or even their mouth, and in the automotive industry, for example, to detect drowsiness or ensure that drivers are focused on the road, and finally, in augmented and virtual reality headsets, eye tracking is crucial and is coming to many future uh, he headsets as it can allow foveated rendering, so showing only the full resolution image where the user is actually looking and thus significantly reducing the requirements on hardware and as such also heating. Uh, this slide was not here until yesterday, but Google just, for example, acquired a company which does eye tracking specifically with the goal of actually introducing it to their future headsets. Why are eyes actually that interesting? Throughout these 100 years of research, we've actually learned a lot about them. And we know that throughout a normal workday, our eyes do hundreds of thousands of, eye of movements at any given time, even when we think we're focusing on a single dot. The responsiveness and, and, and fastness at which the eyes move is also staggering. If something salient shows in your visual field, your eyes will actually reorient and start moving toward it in less than 80 milliseconds sometimes. And they do so being the, as, as one of the fastest or the fastest rotational movement on human body. What is important for us is that they are both voluntary. So if I ask you to look right, you can look right whenever you want. But if I show you something, you might reflexively and you will reflexively also respond to that and you will look probably to the something that changed in your visual field. And additionally, it has been shown that they exhibit individual traits, which can then be used for user authentication. As I've already hinted, uh, of, this is a topic that has been researched. And eye movements can be used either as a control channel, for example, to covertly input passwords or different secrets, or as we will use them as a biometric trait. So extracting characteristics of recorded eye movements, and then do this either task independently, so asking users to, letting users to do whatever they want and in continuously re-authenticating them, or as we will do as an entry point authentication, showing some visual stimulus and ideally extracting as much possible information in a short period of time. Some of the features include looking at scan paths of how eyes move when they're perceiving a scene, areas of interest, speed of their movements, accelerations, latencies, curvatures, and others. Unfortunately, even though this has been a topic that has been researched for the last 15 years, this remains a challenging problem, either to do high error rates or due to long authentication times that are required such until the system gets stable enough features to be able to classify with higher accuracy. This, we believe, is due to several factors, but one of them being also the stimulus that is used in previous research. Uh, for, for, for example, if users are asked to read a section of a text, this might give us some information about them or watch a movie trailer. But the problem is that this, on one side, does take some time and does take some user effort. But on the other side, also, it does depend on users' cognitive state. Similarly, if we need to look at the face, if we're feeling happy or tired or stressed, we might actually have different response. So another thing that we want to address or another challenge that we address here is the fact that even though biometrics are everywhere these days, fingerprints are used to unlock phones, HSBC in the UK is actually suggesting that they might use, just ask users to take selfies to open bank accounts to streamline the experience. The problem is that we do leave, in theory, our fingerprints whenever we touch a glass, and we are super happy to upload our selfies where everyone can take them and reuse them later. So the question is, how can we pre -use or pre prevent also the direct reuse of biometric data or eye movement biometric data? We believe that this can be done. And we looked at, on one side, how biometrics do it. 
they usually implement liveness detection as a proxy in a sense that if the biometric data that is ac actually acquired from the sensor looks like it's coming from me and the sensor is indicating that this is a live person either by for example detecting moisture or or temperature for fingerprints or blinking for face recognition then this probably means that it's a live me standing in front of a sensor on the other hand networking protocols typically implement some kind of freshness detection so there is a nonce or there is a timestamp and then basically this since it changes every time there is, you cannot reuse the same um, type of data in our work we start with a simple assumption of the system model where the user is trying to authenticate to the workstation this is done using a gaze tracking device which tracks where user is looking or how user is looking at the screen while a certain visual stimulus is shown on the other hand the adversary has the simp uh, several goals or the goal of actually authenticating as the legitimate user we believe in two different ways one is impersonating doing a zero effort impersonation so as a standard biometric sitting in front of the device following the protocol and acting like a legitimate user on the other hand we believe that it is critical to also assume that an adversary can observe some of the authentication attempts can collect some of the responses or some of the measurements that the gaze tracking device would actually measure and then try replaying this directly back to the device we believe that this is something that we need to be able to protect at least to some extent we also note that there are more advanced specifically targeted attacks if we assume that an adversary can observe unlimited amount of authentication attempts and of course if you assume that he can generate a model completely to imitate users eye movements arbitrary at will then unfortunately there is nothing secret and biometrics in general cannot necessarily be used in such high security scenarios but as we'll mention later our stimulus being interactive we believe that also we additionally raise bar for such an attacker and the design goals I'll just go through them quickly uh, we want to have low error rates everyone wants we also want to have short authentication times additionally this being a biometric we want to have low cognitive load on the user nothing to remember no specific instructions to follow and addition and finally we want to be able to pr prevent sorry to provide some uh, uh, resistance against replay attacks so how would an ideal stimulus look like it would pr predominantly extract physiological features not that much cognitive features that depend on what the user is currently thinking it would be short it would require simple interaction and finally we should be able to change it every time that the user wants to authenticate so that we can actually verify that the response is fresh it's new we went through a lot of different ideas we from even finding Waldo on an image to a lot of crazier ideas what we came up with I think it's maybe the simplest that I just show you now uh, so if you can pay attention to the screen uh, uh, yeah <laughs> so the core idea is let's extract reflexive eye movements or reflexiveness somehow of eye movements and then use this for authentication but now for real okay so that's the the basic idea the idea is that even though I gave you no instructions even though I don't really know which language you're speaking these the the fact that there is a red dot on the screen your eyes for millions of years have actually been uh, predated to follow it and they will continue to do so as long as you actively decide to stop if we show a stimulus shortly for a couple of seconds what we are able to do we are able to extract reflexive eye movements as we'll show later but importantly we are actually able to elicit a predictable response here you can see two different responses from two different users uh, each each of the dots actually being one measurement at one point of time where the user is gazing and the red dots showing where the stimulus was shown at which time uh, even though these two users have slightly different eye movements or slightly different characteristics they all still follow the same general path and we can use this later to actually validate if the response is fresh or indeed corresponds to the challenge uh, just for the sake of short terminology we will refer to saccades or we or the neurophysiological research uses saccades use the term saccades for quick movements from one point to another and fixations are parts where you're actually looking at a single dot and your eyes still do make small movements as such we can actually design a protocol that allows us as I've already said that allows us to verify if the challenge is actually fresh and then also additionally 
verify that this is the legitimate user. Shortly, the protocol consists of users claiming the identity. The workstation, on the other hand, creating a challenge which consists of the positions of dots on the screen, depending, of course, on the number of positions. We'll discuss this later. And then presents the stimulus to user, showing a dot at one position, and then the user gazes, and then at another, and another, and another, and repeating this for a couple of seconds. Finally, we need to verify if the response that we received is a potential replay attack, or if it's really fresh. So how do we do this? We might need a bit more space, but um, so as I've already said, you do see that even though you don't see timestamps here, you do see that these, this case corresponds very closely to the positions of the uh, dots in the stimulus. Where on the other hand, if somebody replayed the same response for another challenge, it is even to the naked eye clear that this is not a fresh response. On the other hand, we need to verify the identity of the user. It is not enough just to say that somebody looked at the challenge. So we do this in a fairly standard way of biometric authentication. We extract different features for some of them spatial, as you can see here. Uh, so for example, the curviness of these I the direct saccades or the size of the fixations and many others, and then train a binary class classifier to actually determine between the legitimate user and everyone else. Additional point that I need to, that we, that makes our stimulus ad, uh, especially suited for this application is the fact that we do, we, the stimulus is actually interactive. Because we know where you're looking, we can know when did your gaze actually enter close enough to the, the, the point of uh, the, where the stimuli is located. And then we can know that we need to now move it immediately. Otherwise, since different users have different saccade latencies and different eye movement speeds, we could never be able to perfectly fit the correct position. And this repeats several times as long as we need to actually acquire stable enough response. This has, besides minimizing the dwell time, so never having users to actually look at the dot and wait, this also maximizes the number of detail or number of uh, saccades that we can extract in any given moment. It reduces habituation, increases reflexiveness, and finally, it does also increase the effort for an attacker. On one side, impersonating something that is mainly reflexive by definition should be hard. On the other side, if it's a generative attacker, he needs to be able to respond to the channel uh, challenge also interactively. And so how do we evaluate our system? We evaluated this in asking four main questions. Are we indeed able to elicit reflexive responses? What is the influence of challenge complexity? So what if we increase the number of positions that we show to the user? How do the error rates hopefully fall? And how does the authentication time increase? And finally, how well can we provide resistance against impersonation attacks and against replay attacks? We had four sessions which it, with each user, each consisting of 15 authentication attempts during a course of a normal workday, being separated at least six hours. 30 participants, and this uh, in total uh, uh, amounted to 1,600 different authentication attempts that we uh, measured. So are we really able to elicit reflexive saccades? Neurophysiological research agrees that reflexive saccades usually happen much faster than voluntary saccades, in a sense that they usually happen in less than 250 milliseconds after the stimulus changes, where voluntary saccades happen slower or even after 300 milliseconds. If we look at all the saccades that we measured through our experiments, we can indeed see in the distribution that the majority actually fall between 80 milliseconds and about 250 milliseconds. So we believe that, yeah, as a, as a result, we believe that we are mainly eliciting reflexive saccades. On the other side, if you look at the t authentication time or the stimulus complexity, uh, we see that the error rates fall as expected as we increase the number of dots that we show. While on the other side, authentication times does increase, but increases linearly. This also hints that since, solving, since looking at the first few dots doesn't take significantly longer than the last few dots, this indi indicates that users do not get tired while responding to a stimulus. The error rates fall first faster than linearly, then about uh, they s slow down. We believe we, we chose a uh, trade-off between security and, and safety for the rest of the analysis to be about 15 seconds per uh, 15 positions for authentication attempt, which resulted in about five seconds median authentication time for our users. 
the important thing is also that majority of users, 90, more than 90% of them are able to authenticate in seven seconds or less. In terms of evaluating the system against impersonation attacks, we evaluate it in a standard way that binary classifiers are usually evaluated using an ROC curve. Here, what you can see is the trade-offs depending on how we choose the threshold on accepting or rejecting a potential uh, authentication attempt. On one side, you can see that if, if, all, if we are very, very strict and we reject almost everything, then the false reject rate will be very high. On the other side, we can have a very lax threshold and accept almost any authentication attempt. Ideally, we would, the, the curve, as we change thresholds, would go in the upper left corner and we would have perfect, we would always reject all fraudulent attempts and let all uh, legitimate users authenticate. But as we can see, we do get close. Uh, the error rates that we achieve are about 6%. This also depends on the scenario how we evaluate. So if we evaluate for, if the assumed attackers are those that have never been seen during enrollment, during system training, we get slightly uh, worse results. We get about 7% error rates. Where on the other side, if we evaluate on in the scenario where this is, for example, a smaller company, then we get about 6%, 6 6.2% error rates. On average, the error rates are about 6%. And finally, replay attacks. Since, we, for, since each authentication attempt, and we had more than 1,000 of them, consisted of a French challenge, and we received one response from a user, ignoring the identity verification that is used with a binary classifier, we can actually evaluate how well would the system be able to reject or accept something that is potentially a replay attack. In this case, you can see that a challenge, uh, which is exactly in the same way as we do normally in the system, so for each of the thousand challenges, we simulate how would each of the thousand responses actually fare. Again, there is a trade-off, of course. If we are very strict, we will be rejecting everyone, uh, both the, uh, apologize, if we are very strict and we require all points to be perfectly gazed, we will be rejecting everyone even the legitimate users, but also, of course, we will be perfect and re reject all the attackers. On the other side, if we are very lax, all the even replays will succeed. What is very promising is that for a wide range of between 40 and 65 or 70 percent um, uh, threshold, we get almost, uh, we get very, very high results. And choosing a threshold of, for example, 50 percent gives us a false accept rate of as low as 0.06 percent. This means that Less than six, less than 0.06 percent of all the simulated uh, uh, replay attacks would succeed. But on the other side, we are still able to keep very low reject rates of legitimate users' attempts. In conclusion, in this work, we showed that how can reflexive eye movements or reflexive of eyes be used for in order to build fast biometric authentication, which. As a result, we improved both the authentication times and error rates in comparison to previous work on, in uh, eye-based biometrics. And finally, we were able to then, because we can elicit reflexive and thus predictable response, we're able to actually devise or design a proper challenge response authentication system. As I've already said at the beginning of the talk, and two days ago, uh, for example, the, the articles from two days ago show as eye movement has become a more and more important interface in our everyday, everyday lives. We believe that this is an important step towards making user authentication on each of these systems fast and secure. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I would be very happy to receive them. Thank you. All right, we have quite some time for questions. If you decide to ask a question, please step up to the microphone, name your name and affiliation, and fire away. Paul Van Orshot, uh, Carleton University. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the very clear talk. I, enjo I enjoyed it very much. Um, all 25 minutes, except for about five seconds, I actually found it, it disruptive to see the five seconds of stimulation. So that leads to my question. Um, did you ask users if they enjoyed this uh, in terms of user acceptability compared to other methods? Um, we did not ask users specifically.